So I heard someone had found an account for Stefan Stearns on a website called FetLife, which is described as the world's largest and most popular social network for the bondage community and for those folks with certain fetishes and kinks. I bit the bullet and set up an account, much to my own chagrin, and not to kink, shame anyone, but I had to follow my journalistic instincts to see what I could find out about the man accused of ending the life of his girlfriend's 13-year-old old daughter, Madeline Soto. I'm going to keep this video as safe for work as possible and I don't recommend anyone going to visit that website. It is intriguing that I only learned of someone finding Stearns on the website via Reddit and web sleuths, and not because I saw it in a subpoena or court documents anywhere. So I hope investigators are hot on the trail of Stearns' activity on the website. In fact, the notice of supplemental discovery for Stearns' case lists everything but this dating website specifically by name. There are lists of incident reports, applications, applications and affidavits for search warrants for a Fitbit account, digital content belonging to Stearns, an Apple account associated with Jennifer Soto and Madeline Soto, a search warrant for life storage, an Amazon order, and even Stearns' dad's timeline. While I see search warrants for Discord, I don't see ones for dating websites specifically. As we know from previous research, Stearns used the name Sustinet on Reddit as his handle. According to the dating website, Sustine joined FetLife on August 23, 2022. That same day, he followed a user named Alexa Lee, who describes herself as a 100% natural-born sinner and a person who loved bruises, among other things. No other activity, photos, videos, writings, or anything can be seen conducted by Stearns on the site, save for joining the announcements community. He only has the standard standard question mark as his user profile. Curiously, Stearns listed the word switch next to his handle, which is someone who is willing to take on either a dominant or submissive role in a sexual relationship. Further clues that this indeed is likely Stearns' account is the fact that he listed himself as a 38-year-old straight male from Kissimmee, Florida in the United States. Stearns was born on April 25, 1986, which indeed makes him a 38-year-old male right now. Why would he list his real birthday and location? I don't know, I just automatically put my real birth date in the website out of habit, but I didn't list my real location. What is significant about Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022, the day Stearns joined the site? Why did Stearns go through the trouble of setting up an account and following the self-dubbed Twisted Temptress Alexa Lee that same day, the only person he appears to have followed? Did he meet her in person? Did he share any deep, dark secrets and messages with her? Or did he just admire her from his glowing screen? Well, if Maddie was indeed beginning her sixth grade year at Hunter's Creek Middle School back then, she would have been in school that day since the school year started on August 10, 2022. Count eight of Stearns' charges lists a battery offense against her on August 15th, 2022, only eight days prior to joining the naughty website. His next charge, count nine, lists a date of offense of nearly an entire year later on June 14th, 2023. Although the dates of the offenses are not in order in court documents, and not listed chronologically, it seems as though Stearns may not have offended Maddie for nearly an entire year following August 15th, 2022. Is that because Stearns and Jennifer were on a break during that time? Was he living with his parents? Or do cops just not have any photographic or video evidence of offenses during that time period? Is that why he turned to the website? It would be very interesting to hear if Stearns shared any messages 
images, videos, photos, or other information with Alexa Lee. Here's hoping cops have already gone down that line of investigation. In the meantime, days after offending Maddie and days prior to joining that dating website, Stearns as Sustine was on Reddit, complaining about his meds and dry happy endings. On Thursday, August 18th, 2022, Stearns responded to question that asked men, how good is your ability to have multiple orgasms while keeping yourself from ejaculating? Sustine wrote, like, non-existent? I don't know how you intentionally have an orgasm without ejaculating other than clenching hard or pinching it off, or why you would want to as that kind of orgasm, known as a dry orgasm, is not only extremely unsatisfying, but not really healthy either, as it can lead to issues that cause infertility. Look up retrograde ejaculation. It's not fun. Let your swimmers fly free and train yourself to keep going after that if you want to try for multiples as a man. He went on to explain how the medication he took had an impact on his private life, all very troubling in light of his criminal charges. Stearns continued writing, I used to take Adderall every day, and an unfortunate side effect of that medication for me was dry orgasms. Something down there got all clenched up while I was on the stuff and pinched off the flow, causing retrograde ejaculation. And I can tell you for sure that it is the most frustrating and unsatisfying kind of orgasm there is when there is no accompanying feeling of release. Even worse, if it happens often enough, it can train your body to just keep doing whether you want to or not. Maybe Stearns meant just keep going whether you want to or not. Remember when Stearns told the cops about taking Ativan for anxiety? Well, he didn't mention Adderall. It's not clear when he stopped taking it, but it makes sense that people might be tempted to attempt to use Adderall's focus-improving effects to treat anxiety symptoms. Adderall is an uncommon treatment for anxiety and can actually make anxiety symptoms worse. Stearns wrote, I had to retrain myself to be able to release normally again. It sucks. There is no scientifically proven health benefit to fully denying yourself to ejaculate. There are benefits to edging and stamina training certainly, but not releasing at all? Nah. Any benefits there are potential, purported, or anecdotal. Whatever the reasons Stearns joined that site on that specific day, whether he was on a break from Jen or not, I don't think it was good for him. It's not like it helped him get on the straight and narrow path. Instead, as court documents attest, Stearns would go on to turn his evil desires against Maddie once again, who suffered at the hands of her mother's boyfriend in total for five long years of her life, from age eight until age 13. All of these continued findings by sleuths across the web give us more insight into the sick mind of the man who seemingly just didn't pursue worthwhile pursuits, but instead turned his harmful ire on a young girl. Therefore, as we wait for more public record requests to be fulfilled and many more questions to be answered, a fuller portrait of Stearns' reported kinky nature is coming into view, as one of his friends termed both Stearns and Jen, and the burning queries remain. How much did Jennifer know about this dark side of Stearns' life? Was she against it, and is that the reason for their on and off again relationship, or was she a fully aware, willing participant? Did she know his proclivities extended toward her daughter, or was she truly in denial and visibly upset at the proof police produced for her to view? Chances are we'll find out a lot more in due time, even as the Lord of Hosts already knows all, Zechariah 4.10, who, with reason, despises the day of small things beginnings. For these seven eyes, shall rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which roam throughout the earth.